So, you want to talk to some composers, like the ones from Hawk and Rev Vampire Slayers, my latest film? Let's do it. Hey, it's Ryan Barton Grimley. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you're returning, I hope you're subscribed. If you're not, hit that button. And if you're new, I think you might have just found a really awesome buffet of indie film content. I got a great treat for you today. I got a hold of the Hawk and Rev Vampire Slayers co-composers, Ari Schneider and Robbie Elfman. These are two of the most talented musicians I've ever ever seen in my life and they just did a magical score for Hawk and Rev. So I wanted to talk to them about it and kind of get what their side of it all was like because obviously I know mine is the director but so what? Who wants to hear about that? Here is a really awesome and in-depth interview with both of them about the score for Hawk and Rev Vampire Slayers and all kinds of other awesome things. So Without further ado, Ari Schneider and Robbie Elfman, co-composers for Hawk and Rev Vampire Slayers. I'll see you on the other side. Hey, uh, Brian Barton Grimley here, director and writer of Hawk and Rev Vampire Slayers here with Ari Schneider and Robbie Elfman, who are responsible for all of the amazing music that is in Hawk and Rev Vampire Slayers. You know, it's such a huge part of the movie. So I wanted to interview these guys properly and put it on the YouTube for fans so they would understand what what it was like for you guys and what the process was and how you feel about you know the end product and everything and I just kind of wanted to hear what it was like on your end because I know what it was like on mine but I feel like fans would really like to hear about the score because the score is like really eclectic and very powerful so without further ado uh Robbie Elfman and Ari Schneider. I am Ari Schneider. I play Rev in Hawk and Rev. I also uh, co-produced and I co-composed with the amazing Robbie Elfman, one of my best friends. And uh, Robbie, introduce yourself. <laughs> oh man, no worries. Yeah, I'm, I'm Robbie Elfman. Man, Ari and I have been growing up since childhood. Ever since we've grown up together as kids, we've always just shared our love of, of movies and music. I went to film scoring school around the same time he was going to film school, so we were turning each other onto the best movies and watching the classics like Chinatown and Taxi Driver and stuff together. Just nerding out, basically. Yeah. I think, in a better way to describe that, though, is I was following mm. Robbie's musical prowess and genius, trying to keep up, and mm. realizing I couldn't keep up. We found, like, oh, wait a minute I'm doing comedy you know and acting how do we I can incorporate that into music and you're like yeah we can incorporate that into music and that's kind of how we started I feel like that's how we started doing music together absolutely yeah well yeah exactly as I was going into this like crazy composer musician direction you were going into this crazy actor comedian but also writer filmmaker direction and so it just became clear like oh I can I can be the composer and if you have a musical idea we can co-write something you know you just bring me the melody and the lyrics I'll, I'll bring the music to back yeah. it up and we'll flesh it out together and we, we were we started by doing web shorts man. so those are the web shorts ryan and i wrote and then we shot yeah. and then we're like robbie we need music and you're like no problem and then <laughs> next day it's like five different i remember you are saying oh my my friend robbie you know him he he'll he'll do music for this it'll be insane watch mm -hmm. and i and i remember having like you know normal expectations and then hearing it and being like whoa like that is crazy. And and that was just the one theme and there were like five and they were all really good. And I was like, okay, this is a whole other level of musical like expertise and, yeah. and also related to the comedy, which is really hard. Well, I think another thing that was really cool is that we would send Robbie like a 10th idea of what we wanted and then you would do a better version. And Kenny Loggins. Kenny Loggins. <laughs> Kenny Loggins. Kenny Loggins. <laughs> um, Kenny Loggins. Yeah, but I think I think with this project, it was fun because Robbie and I have always been able to collaborate, but it was the first time composing together. We did a feature called Elijah's Ashes that Robbie did the whole, you know, the whole score to. And Ryan and I, you know, my, I was we were saying, oh, that sounds good. That doesn't sound, that's great. Or can you go back and do this? Yeah. 
It was more but, of a notes process on our yeah, end. Yeah, to go into work with Robbie and then being like, you know, me singing in front of a microphone and him doing this stuff. And I'm like, wow, we're really, we're doing this. And it's oh yeah, fun. And I mean, we would do this anyway, so it didn't really That's matter. right. We should clarify for anyone who watches the movie, there are all of these voices and there are vocals yeah. in like a lot of the score. And that is these two guys. <laughs> like, That's us. Wearing. There are no, there are no rando singers or backup singers it's you guys yeah that was one of the most fun parts of this process where and it, it couldn't be an easier film to score i mean actually this film knew exactly what it was and the only thing the code we had to crack was just finding the balance between horror and comedy. Even as we were figuring out what the score was gonna be, Ari was putting in temp music. Ari was music supervisor and taking each scene we knew we needed to work on and showing it to me with eight different types of music, one of which I would eventually emulate. We would go back and forth and find the right balance between funny and scary and where, it need, where the music needed to be goofy, even if the scene was scary and which type of music would move the scene forward the most and make it the most fun and once once we found that and it really i think was kind of emphasis on the goofy and the fun it just became one of the most fun projects to work on i think the reason why it was so fun is when it came to doing more like scary you know composing john carpenter 80s throwback yeah. stuff you know i could sit with robbie and be like what if we play with that and then robbie be like and then he'd layer it and i'd be like laughing and just like how are you doing this is amazing but then we got to do a rock song or we got to do a mm -hmm. western ballad i mean um, I, I from my end you were like like, well, what do you think the score should sound like? And I mean, I couldn't have been more all over the place. I want 80s John Carpenter. And what about heavy Lost Boys and then crazy Western stuff? But the weird thing is, is like you guys did all that stuff and then did it in the right places. And it actually really works. <laughs> it's kind of insane. And every time, Ari, you would be, I would feel like there were these these things you would send me, video with stuff in there just to get my feedback to see if it was close or anything. And the weird thing was every time you were apprehensive about one, you'd be like, wait, well, there's one more and I'm, <laughs> uh, I don't know about it. I don't know if you were doing that on purpose, but that ended up being the way we went probably nine out of 10 times. There was a bit of manipulation going on there a little bit. <laughs> Mine, it worked. It worked but really well. <laughs> I'll never forget. There's a scene in the film where it's supposed to be a little scary, not vampire scary, but just threatening. And you kept saying, you know, I really do want to emphasize that how scary this is with the music. And so Robbie and I were just like, okay, we, we I know we threw all these different things. And then I, that was when I threw the last Scooby. I'm like, this one's just Scooby-Doo. I don't think this is going to be the one. And I honestly didn't think you'd go for it. And I'm yeah. so happy that you did. You chose that one. Well, it's interesting. Because there was stuff that sounded like the Dark Knight. It was like intense and it just was totally <laughs> yeah, off. Like, like it did. It was like, oh. And it was yeah. like, that, that, that did not work. Because like in your mind as the director, you're like, I want to convey this feeling, but you're like forcing it. It didn't even need it. Well, you know, what's interesting is because this movie pays so much uh, like, you know, tributes to all these old, you know, all the Lost Boys. Homage, and, and yeah. All, yeah, homage. The reason why it was so much fun is because we, what do we like? Okay, Tarantino, Django type of stuff. You know, mm -hmm. let's throw some Western, because Ryan and I always veered towards Western. I feel like when we're working with Robbie. It's always like, yeah. it doesn't matter what the movie is, somehow the music will somehow veer towards because like a Neil Morricone. Awesome. Because it's awesome. awesome. And Neil Morricone, yeah. I mean, he's, he's one of my favorites. Right, even before same. before we started working together. And so the moment it felt like, oh, let's go in that direction with strumming guitars and yeah. these kinds of form. I love it. Ay, ay, ay. You know, it, I just, yeah. Like and so we found that that when doing that, that would be the emo stuff for Hawk, because I think when R Ryan, you were kind of putting some of the temp stuff in, it was, you know, it was aggro and, and meadow and stuff, and it, it, it wasn't giving justice to the movie. And I realized now what you did, that's how Hawk would score the movie. Hawk would score the right. movie with aggro. Right. Rough, but Hawk is not the only character in that movie, right? So you have no. Hawk, you have Rev, you have all these. If anything, the movie I makes fun of Hawk. Exactly. <laughs> and so I think that there's a time and a place for that aggro rock stuff to make fun of them. But but I think just we just decided, what if we, instead of going aggro rock, we just went folky song or we went Eastern European <laughs> flute, you know, polka. whatever. Flute, yeah, polka, exactly. Yeah, and kind um, of made fun of it from like an omniscient point of view more. I think yeah. Robbie and I had a, we had a mantra basically. We were like, if it gives 
gives us the feels, then it's working. Mm. There was no code really. As the composer, looking at this film for the first time, I was hearing the kind of music that would normally be expected to go with these scenes. The Dark Knight kind of angsty, pulsating stuff. But when Ari took temp versions of that and put it on the scene, it just, it matched too much. We had to, we had to go, we had to play against it and be a little more ironic, thumbing our nose a little bit. And then it just clicked. It just clicked. It needed that irony because with the smashing together of all these homages, it kind of makes a comment on that whole time. If it's too on the nose, then it feels like a bad version of a movie from that time, which is not what we were trying to make. We were trying to make a really fun homage to people who are stuck in that time, but now are here. Pending the music choice, a lot of homage stuff and finer kind of ironic stuff wouldn't shine or right. would shine pending on what's in there. Because the yeah, joke think, is that Hawk is like this, you know, Team America idiot, but it's a joke that he's doing that. I mean, but if you think about all the stuff we love, Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, you know, uh, Nick Frost, and music is such a is such a huge part of their comedy. And I think with this movie, it allowed the music to be there. We wanted you to hear it. We didn't want it in the background. We didn't want it to just be underlying there. Like we wanted to be with them, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all it's part pushing, of the joke. It's driving the journey for sure. Yeah. Like I knew it was in the pocket when you showed me that track. There's a scene later in the third act when the bad guy is about to really do the worst bit of gore that happens yeah. in the movie. It could be scored a million ways, <laughs> but the way yeah. that you presented to to me, you were like, just trust me on this man. Just just go with this. Really just have an open mind. And it becomes this really this very kind of of heartfelt fairy tale thing that is so bizarre juxtaposed to that love yeah. of war. <laughs> the 80s emo love stuff was so much fun and Robbie and I just wanted to continue writing lyrics for these songs. Yeah, what, and like, the Lost Boys kind of thing you guys did. Let's see, here we go. Ooh. One, two, three. Stake me Stake through, me through the, the heart. heart. Stake me through. through the heart tonight. Take me through the heart. I'm just Baby, kept thinking of... Could, what was the lyric? Baby, we could... What Baby, we God could... Make me die. It, it doesn't make, make sense, sense it's literally, but it's you. perfect. It's no, so but what perfect. was that one line? What was oh, that yeah, one no, line? Okay, the, my favorite line said, is, uh, help me stay alive. Uh, help me stay alive. Yeah. Stay beside my side. Die. And here's my favorite go. part. We could live forever, we could, we could stay together till the morning, till the morning comes, comes tonight. tonight. <laughs> It's the so Lost story. Boys. Carter Burwell and Brilliant. Lost Boys and, and the John Carpenter scores himself, that kind of like... Yeah. And then I came up with this... Oh yeah, my god. So many John Carpenter it, themes have three notes or just Yeah. Well he's you know. literally playing them on his desk. I mean it's yeah. so good. That's yeah. just so simple and so effective. You gave us a palette to to really like paint so many different things because the movie could be one thing, but it's not. You have slow motion scenes walking down an alley emo. You have fighting you know, on, on the beach choreography, him working out. You have scary vampire kills, you have the love mm. so it just was like and it's all silly and fun. So we're it's like, buffet, well, man. It's a buffet. I mean, it was <laughs> Robbie and I had fun the entire time. Yes. It's just an easy, casual, fun watch. And I think that mm -hmm. was part of the music, too. The film has the peak and the rise. We save it when you, you know, I know when working at the indie level with a limited budget, you save that stuff for the best moments. And when you, when you hit it right at the sweet spot, the film reaches a peak and it does every, and it just feels like every movie you watch that you've loved growing up. This film yeah. hits all those points. VHS, like 80s, you know, early DVD, it just feels like that video store rando thing you picked up that the yeah. guy was like, oh, you should get that one, man. That yeah, one's literally. way better than everything. Yeah. There was a <laughs> Watch it and you're like, oh! It's, it's the cult know? section that has like Repo Man there right. and like um, and Reanimator. Trouble in Middle China. And... Big Trouble in Middle China. Oh, what's this one? Oh, Hawk and It's Rat, got her, it, I know we made the movie, but like it really does have a strange rewatchability to it. I'll never forget, there was one, I'm just changing topics here now. There is 
that one scene where we had not yet put music to, and it's I'm not going to give away much, but it's a scene where it just drags on. It's between Hawk and Rev, and Hawk is throwing out a bunch of quotes. Oh, and, inappropriate know, jokes. Oh, no, no, the quote. The quote, yeah. Oh, and it, we just, and, and it was, I love that you, Ryan, I just, I have to give you credit. You embraced what I so wanted to just let this scene just go on and on and on and on and on. And so then how do you score that, right? How do you, right. do you put music in the background or do you just leave it? And, and Robbie and I remember for a while, we were like, maybe we shouldn't mess with it. It was like 20 different tracks I threw behind it. Oh, and I was always hoping it would be this one thing. And uh, that was the last thing that we kind of butted heads on. <laughs> you kind of were like, yeah, just do it. <laughs> when I view that scene now, I feel like I'm seeing it from your character Rev's eyes. It's Rev seeing that the fairy tale he's part of is going wrong and that his co-conspirator in the fairy tale has lost his mind. <laughs> and and that's perfect because actually a grown man spouting off all of those things is a guy who's lost his mind. What's just, funny is this other person's just like, what have I gotten into here? And it's almost like the Princess Bride now. Is there anything you guys want to talk about that you're working on now and what working on into the future? Obviously, this movie is going to come out in a couple weeks and, you know, have whatever life it ends up having. Now that this is doing its thing, is there something you guys want to plug or like, what are you looking forward to working on musically? Um, Jana Savage, who plays Theo, fantastic actress and just awesome human being and she and myself and Robbie have been uh, uh, working on a, on a fun little musical we've just been pushing that so we, uh, we're in the creative development stages of the musical so I know that Ari and Jana are you know working outlining the story and the script and Ari and I are outlining the music beats in sort of a sketch form with with me banging out chords and rough melodies and Ari taking that and doing just improvising lyrics and vocal lines just to create what it could sound like and it's been a blast. It, it's we, been a blast. <laughs> well, I, I just wanted to thank you guys like properly and publicly for the massive contribution to the film. Far surpassed any kind of concept I had. And, and I mean, the entire film has, to be fair. Mm -hmm. But I have such a large part of that is the music. I don't think people would be responding to it in the way that they are in this like really positive way if it weren't for this incredible score. You guys breathe the whole layer of life into it. Thank you, by the way. Sorry. Yeah, that. Thank you. Of course. Bye, guys. See you, See you soon. Thanks, thank you. Thanks awesome. for everything. Thanks for the awesome score. I don't know about you guys, but I felt like that was totally amazing. It was so good to catch up with those two dudes. Two incredibly talented musicians with an understanding of film that is unparalleled. If you need a score for your project, you should contact these people. They're just incredibly talented, as you can see, and nice, thoughtful individuals to boot. Again, thanks so much for tuning in. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Share this with somebody who might appreciate it and I'll see you in the future.